Anatomy and Physiology. Levels of organization. We start at tissue level, which is a group of cells that work together to perform a certain function. Here we have cardiac tissue. Next level is the organ level, where two or more tissues work together to perform a specific task. So that would be the heart. And we have an organ system, where multiple organs that function together to perform a vital body function, the circulatory system, and then the organism. All the organ systems functioning together as an integrated unit, as in a human. Major organ systems in animals, respiratory, circulatory, reproductive, digestive, urinary or excretory, immune, nervous, and endocrine. Respiratory and circulatory systems. The respiratory and circulatory systems bring oxygen and nutrients to the cells. These two systems work together to maintain homeostasis with respect to gas exchange. The respiratory system moves gases into and out of the blood. The circulatory system transports blood to all cells of the body. The function of the respiratory system is to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. The part of an animal where gases are exchanged with the environment is called the respiratory surface. Respiratory surfaces must be moist in order to function properly because gases are dissolved in water before diffusing across these surfaces. Gas exchange in this newt occurs in the feathery gills behind the head. Circulatory system. Every organism must exchange materials with its environment. This exchange ultimately occurs at the cellular level. Small, simple animals exchange materials directly with the environment via diffusion. For large, more complex animals, diffusion is not a sufficient method of exchange. These animals have a circulatory system. These flatworms that you see here exchange materials via diffusion. Reproductive system. The parts of the male and female reproductive systems work together as one human reproductive system. Many animals reproduce sexually, which means that half of the baby's genes come from its mother and the other half come from its father. This mixing process leads to genetic diversity in the population. Sperm are produced by the male reproductive system and eggs are produced in the female reproductive system. When sperm and an egg meet, a fertilized egg forms. Reproduction in animals. The reproductive system's biological functions are to produce haploid sex cells, either sperm or eggs, and to enable conception, the fusion of sperm and egg, gestation, the development from conception to birth, birth, and breastfeeding. The diagram shown illustrates the haploid cells produced by males, the sperm, and the female egg. So here's egg and sperm. After conception, so here we have fertilization and conception, a zygote is formed that will undergo several rounds of cell division. So we have cell division and mitosis, forming an embryo and later a fetus. Fertilization takes place in a fallopian tube if sperm is present. Fertilized and unfertilized eggs move through the tube to the uterus over a period of four to five days. The uterus is where the developing egg implants develops into an embryo and then a fetus. During embryogenesis, after the formation of the hollow ball of cells called the blastula, one end of the embryo folds in and expands to gradually fill the space in the blastula. This process is referred to as gastrulation and results in the formation of the three primary germ layers, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. Embryonic development in humans. 
After eight weeks, the embryo is the size of a bean. It is developing arms, legs, and organ systems and is now called a fetus. After 12 weeks, all the organ systems are beginning to function and the fetus has a fully functional placenta. Its liver is making red blood cells, its kidneys are filtering blood, it is developing fingernails, and its bones are hardening. For the next 28 weeks, the fetus will grow and continue to develop so that it will be able to live independently of the mother's body. A typical pregnancy lasts 40 weeks, yet babies are commonly born between 37 and 41 weeks. Digestive system. The functions of the digestive system are ingestion, the act of eating, digestion, the process of breaking food down into molecules small enough to absorb, absorption, or the uptake of nutrients by body cells, and elimination, the passage of undigested material out of the body. Urinary system. The urinary system excretes urine and regulates the amount of water and ions in body fluids. In order to survive in any environment, an animal needs to balance its need for water with the disposal of waste. The crucial organ of the excretory system is the kidney, which helps all body systems maintain homeostasis by removing wastes and keeping the blood balanced. Immune system. The immune system is in charge of fighting off infection and pathogens. It does so by preventing attacks. The immune system relies on physical barriers such as the skin and mucous membranes to keep microorganisms out of the human body and detecting invaders. Once a pathogen is inside the body, the circulatory system and lymphatic system transport white blood cells to the infection site. In the event that the immune system cannot prevent attacks after it identifies an invader, it attacks invaders. White blood cells can attract more white blood cells to the site of infection, engulf foreign invaders, spray parasites with poison, and initiate immune responses. Antibodies, interferons, and complement proteins are polypeptides also used by the immune system to attack invaders remembers invaders. When a person is immune to a pathogen, the person will not get sick if the same type of pathogen invades the body. Nervous system. Here are the main nervous system functions. Sensory input, integration, and motor output. Sensory input is responsible for receiving signals from sensory receptors. Integration is where we interpret the sensory signals and form the appropriate responses. And motor output is we conduct signals from the integration center to the effector organs, muscles or glands, to carry out the response. Most animals have a nervous system that is divided into two divisions. Central nervous system, CNS, brain and spinal cord, which acts as the main processing center, and then peripheral nervous system, PNS, which is all other nerves, which act as cables that carry information to and away from the central nervous system. The endocrine system produces hormones that affect growth, development, and homeostasis. Hormones act as chemical messengers that regulate different body functions. They are produced by a gland in one part of the body, secreted into the body, and carried to another part of the body. Hormones have a wide range of targets. Some, like the sex hormones, affect most tissues of the body, whereas others, like glucagon, only act on specific cells. Nervous to endocrine connection. The nervous system sends signals through the endocrine system. For example, when a person feels excited, the sympathetic nervous system kicks into gear. This is the division of the nervous system in charge of activating the fight or flight response. On the other hand, if someone is getting ready to eat lunch, 
the body activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Sometimes called the rest and digest system, the parasympathetic system conserves energy as it slows the heart rate, increases intestinal and gland activity, and relaxes sphincter muscles in the gastrointestinal tract. So the nervous system signals with some action potential, the endocrine signals with hormones, and the cells in your body follow those signals. Homeostasis. Many animals maintain relatively constant conditions in their internal environment through a process known as homeostasis. Even as external conditions fluctuate widely, homeostatic mechanisms regulate internal conditions to keep systems functioning at their optimum. There are two types of feedback systems that regulate homeostasis. Negative feedback, when a change in a variable triggers mechanisms that reverse that change, and positive feedback, in which homeostasis is regulated by magnifying a change instead of reversing it. Hormonal regulation examples. Maintaining homeostasis in the urinary system. Reabsorption and excretion of sodium and potassium ions is regulated by aldosterone, a hormone secreted by the adrenal gland. The reabsorption process of kidney function accounts for most of the salt and water balance in the bloodstream. However, homeostasis is fine-tuned by hormones and the nervous system. Maintaining homeostasis in the nervous and endocrine systems. The brain is closely associated with the endocrine system. The hypothalamus is part of the brain and is the master controller of the pituitary gland, the master gland of the endocrine system. Antidiuretic hormone, ADH, causes the cell membranes of tubules to allow more water to flow from tubules into capillaries. ADH is secreted by the pituitary gland, which is under the control of the hypothalamus. The pituitary gland also produces hormones that control growth, growth hormone, reproduction, LH, FSH, prolactin, and oxytocin, metabolic rate, ACTH and TSH, and blood pressure and excretion, ADH. Maintaining homeostasis in the endocrine system. The main function of the pancreas is to maintain healthy blood sugar levels. It is a large gland located behind the stomach. It produces insulin, glucagon, and other hormones. Insulin allows the cells in the muscles, fat, and liver to absorb glucose that is in the blood. The glucose serves as energy to these cells, or it can be converted into fat when needed. Insulin also affects other metabolic processes, such as the breakdown of fats or proteins. So we can see here how these hormones are regulated by, we were talking about the pancreas previously. So if we have low blood sugar, that will pr promote the release of glucagon. The release of glucagon stimulates glycogen breakdown, okay? So we get the breakdown of glycogen into glucose in the liver, which then raises your blood sugar. If you have high blood sugar, that will promote a release of insulin by the pancreas, which stimulates glucose uptake from blood, okay? That will lower blood sugar via your tissue cells. It will also stimulate glycogen formation in the liver, which will then also result in the lowering of blood sugar. Homeostasis is also regulated by behavioral responses. People might seek out warm clothes or a patch of sunlight if they start to feel chilly. They might also curl their body inward and keep their arms tucked in close to keep in the heat. 
Endotherms can regulate their body temperature internally through sweating or shivering, but ectoderms will bask in the sun to bring their body temperature higher. The circadian biological clock is controlled by a group of cells in the hypothalamus that respond to light and dark signals that enables humans to tell time. When eyes perceive light, the retinas send a signal that sets off a chain reaction of hormone production and suppression that affects body temperature, appetite, sleep drive, and more. Some organisms are diurnal, while others are nocturnal. They have different responses to light and dark, signaling when to wake and when to sleep. Growth, development, and aging. Growth is the irreversible increase of an organism's size over a given period. As organisms grow over time to larger sizes, their bodies are making more cells. An organism's growth may go on throughout its life or end when that species is fully mature. Development is when an organism matures into another stage of life. Most animals pass through an embryonic phase, a larval stage, metamorphosis, and an adult phase to reach sexual maturity. In humans and in animals where offspring are generated through sexual reproduction, the development of a new individual must be prepared in the gonads of both parents. Aging in animals can be considered in terms of the decline in the body's performance, functional senescence, or the decline in fertility rate coupled with an increased risk of mortality, demographic senescence.